We're here at the 2023 University of Virginia Investing Conference with Wharton Professor Daniel Rock, who just finished a panel on the disruptive future of artificial intelligence. And your presentation focused on the labor market implications of AI. What are the key takeaways for investors? Yeah, so investors should be thinking about how pervasive the impact of AI is going to be. We find that many occupations have some exposure to AI, but you, you want to think of an occupation as a bundle of tasks, right? So everybody does you know, 10 to 30 different things in their job, and it's not that AI is going to wipe out all of these tasks. It's also not that AI is going to make you super effective at all those tasks. It's targeted. It can do a specific set of things. So what that means is that jobs are going to change. Some jobs, you know, there might be some labor displacement. There might be some people who get much more effective at their work. It's very hard to predict what that long run equilibrium is going to be. Where is everything going to settle? Uh, we don't know if it's going to replace certain roles. We don't know if it's going to augment everybody. But what we do know is that Almost every sector has tons of applications for these new generative AI models. Um, we know that it takes additional investment, complementary assets, business process uh, changes, uh, know-how, training, um, as well as you know, new business structures to really unlock the gains from this new technology. And as a result, um, right now, looking you know, into the future, it's very difficult to say where it all settles. So investors should be prepared for change. There's a new source of risk in the market, and they can, you know, in a very meta kind of way, uh, use these tools to, to do better uh, work themselves. So you know, as they get more familiar with these tools, as these changes percolate through the economy, um, we should expect to see productivity and you know, overall improvements in well-being. Um, there are, of course, risks, many risks. Uh, and those things could generate bad outcomes as well. So, you know, the regulatory infrastructure needs to be, um, you know, bolstered and considered in advance to the extent we can do it, but also we need to be reactive when new risks that we didn't predict show up. So, you know, hopefully that provides a decent overview of uh, some of the different considerations for investors. I probably didn't get all of them. But. That's fascinating. And one last question. Uh, in your talk, you mentioned that there were sort of two main requirements to make AI better. Um, first being scale and the second being taste. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, if you had asked me four years ago, would we see these kinds of capabilities in AI? I would have said you're nuts. Like, there's no way that AI can do all this really cool, you know, creative work, um, for example. Um, but what really changed, uh, one is the stuff many people talk about. These models have much more compute that goes into them. We take much larger data sets and throw them through it. And they have, uh, you know, in some cases, billions or possibly trillions of parameters. Uh, we're seeing doubling in, you know, the size of these models, maybe even every six months. So very quick progress on the scale of the models. And when you've got a trillion parameters to play with to try to get you know, a predictive process uh, correct, um, you're going to do a lot better than if you only have a few million. So these models are built to predict the next word to start with, and that's where the scale really comes in. We can predict that next word given a few words that came before us, or like, you know, with images pixels or video pixels, that sort of thing. Lots of different unstructured data inputs here. But when you're trying to predict the next item in a sequence, you get much better with a bigger model. So that's the scale piece. Now the taste piece, this is what's really interesting, um, you know, we can generate thousands of different outputs from the same model. The hard part is which ones are going to be good. And for that, you use a process called reinforcement learning with human feedback, you may have heard of RLHF. Um, there's also reinforcement learning with AI feedback or constitutional AI. What these let you do is once you've got those thousand or two thousand or n different outputs of the model, let's rank them. And let's say this one's good and that one's bad. And that's what humans did. And now the model can try to predict which of these things that I'm going to generate is going to make the user happy with the output. And that gives models taste. And that's a new thing that we've gotten. That's why you can generate credible song lyrics or um, you know, decent marketing copy, or you can write job postings, or you can make really cool images. Uh, you know, applications are almost limitless. Uh, but they're only limitless if we think that the quality of the output is going to be good. So that combination of two things really created an explosion um, and the model's capabilities. And then lastly, I'll say, you know, the UX angle shouldn't be underrated here. Um, 
this stuff existed for a little while before ChatGPT came out, but that ChatGPT interface was just awesome for getting people to take it up. Fascinating conversation. Uh, Professor Daniel Rock, thank you so much for joining us at the 2023 University of Virginia Investing Conference. Thank you, it's my pleasure.